After your explant surgery, did you find that some brands didn't want to work with you? Ah, juicy. Boyfriend update. I am indeed still 30 day challenges, 24 hour challenges, spend a million eat dollars, Mr. Beast, content, 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 thumbnail, on the rack, flying verse class, throw a thousand gumballs in a eat a thousand hold your breath for 30 years and learn to fly. Am I turning into one of those YouTubers? Whenever I do too many challenges, I just feel semi disconnected from you guys. Right now I'm craving human connection and just like embracing my own creativity. So today we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna bring you guys along for a day in the life of a YouTuber runner, music student, and answer the most common and juiciest questions. The Andrew Huberman protocol I do not follow and probably never will. Waiting 90 minutes before having caffeine. I'm not denying the benefits. I'm sure it would improve my life, but my favorite part of my life is my morning coffee. I don't see the point of living if I don't have that. <laughs> my current workout split is I do three to four resistance workouts a week. Some are only 20 minutes, some are an hour. It's either weights, but I'll swap any of those with a Pilates class or Pilates workout or like a berries class. I'm kind of at this place where I used to be really specific about it. And now I'm like, I just make sure to get resistance training. And then I do three runs a week, one short, three to six kilometers, one long, depending on my training, anywhere from eight to 20. I do one interval training, which I could go to a track, but I usually just do it on a treadmill or do a berries class. As for mobility, I do 10 minutes before every workout, upwards to 20, and I'll prioritize that over the workout, which not everyone agrees with. For me, mobility is a bigger priority than weights. It just improves my quality of life. I put it at the beginning of my workout because I wanna prioritize that. That might not be the case for everyone else. The yeah, my exercises consist of things like this, bird dogs, 90-90s, world's greatest stretch. Go get a physiotherapist. Go one time, try and get benefits. I know it's a cost, but they will tell you the specific mobility exercises for you versus trying to diagnose yourself on YouTube. That's what I did and it has paid off for years. I know it's shocking, but I do indeed train legs. I just don't really do barbell stuff anymore. I just don't care. I can't be bothered to go set it up. I think I just did so many years of it, I'm just burnt out. And I'd rather just throw in some dumbbells. I'm not trying to be the strongest person. I just want weights to improve my performance and longevity. For now, I go through seasons. To my weightlifters that want to go into running, here's my tip. This is what I think, some people disagree. Just start by adding five minutes of running, like once a week, then move it up to 10. Start as small as possible. Some people would say, like eliminate a weight session and start running, I agree. But I think that's where you stand the biggest chance of losing muscle and you like weights. So I think at the start, just add a little bit of running. Speaking of running, I used to be the same and I would just put my phones like in my pockets like that, or even worse, I used to put it in my bra and that was a disaster. Now in the spring and summer, slash if you live somewhere warm, I have the fast and free vest. It just goes boop. Then when it gets chilly out, I have this warmer vest. Cause I've learned that's the thing about running. You can run in any weather. You just need the proper gear. My most common question by far was how to dress and stay motivated for winter workouts. So many of you guys asked. I'm just dedicating a whole video. So next week, so hit subscribe, notification bell. If you want to be reminded, that will be next week's video. The half marathon went both better and worse than I had planned. First 10 kilometers was a breeze. As you guys know, I sliced over my shin. Oh. So I didn't realize at the time, I was overcompensating the entire time on my one leg. So around the 12 kilometer mark, my right knee out. Out for the count. My original goal is to beat two hours then after that 15 kilometer. And I was being overzealous with that, having an injury. I finished without stopping. Uh, and that's all I could ask for. It was great. I'm doing a full recap video for you guys. Love. I don't know how I feel about you guys wanting me to run an ultra. I'm both flattered and insulted. Flattered by the fact you think I could do it and you'd want to watch that. But also, like, you want to see me go through that pain? <laughs> Here's my game plan. I got to do a marathon. I think I'm going to do one in the spring. Because I did the 5K to 10, half. Now I got to do a full marathon. Now triathlons. 
I've been getting a lot of swimming content. I was a competitive swimmer. I'm thinking doing a swimming challenge in 2024, doing my marathon, and then finally doing some biking leading up to triathlon. And a bucket list item for me is to do an Ironman with my brother before I die, which is my dream race. If I could only have one candy the rest of my life, it'd be Swedish fish, but I couldn't even find Swedish fish. No, I wouldn't pick smart sweets. I'd pick the real deal, but this is a close thing to Swedish fish, so have that. I don't mind smart sweets, but if I have too many, they hurt my stomach. That's candy. If we're talking sugar, if I'm having one candy the rest of my life, it's actually chocolate. Specifically, the Maribo in Sweden is the best chocolate brand. I always bring home like six bars when I come to Canada. Oh God. What, what is up? Actually, I'm really shaky. I had a scary man come up to me in the grocery store while I was trying to buy my stuff and weaseled me into buying him a toque. So that's a story for another time. Hair care. I wash my hair two to three times a week. Once Orbe for hydrating, once with Olplex for strengthening. And then if I am really sweaty, I will do a third one and I use Orbe's cleansing cream, which isn't like a deep clean. It just gets rid of all the product and dirt, but it leaves your natural oil. So you won't feel really clean after the hair, but it just is really good. It's like the perfect for us gym girls. You're sweaty, you want to get the sweat out, but you don't want to overwash and dry out your hair. Afterwards, I use a serum and a moisturizing cream before I blow dry. And also once a week, I will do a hair mask, either a strengthening one like Old Plex 3 or a hydrating one like Gold Lust from Orbe. And then I do use a purple shampoo every blue moon for my blonde hair. My skincare routine, I'll talk about my body. I use all Necessaire's products because it's during the day. I will use the serum, body lotion, at night, I also would use the retinol and the body oil. Gift idea, like stocking stuffer, I use their hand cream and their retinol cream. My current skincare routine in the morning is a vitamin C, helps with the redness I naturally have. Then I use a hydrating serum because I'm naturally very, 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 very dry. Moisturizer and lock it in with the oil. Now this isn't a step a lot of people need. I don't have any self tanner on right now, but I've recently, if you've seen my tan I've had on recently, it's this Coco and Eve, and it is the fastest drying, best smelling suntan I've ever used. I thought it'd be fun to do a get ready with me. I've always wanted to do a get ready with me full video. This is just gonna be a little quick segment while I get ready and answer a couple of questions. What sunscreen do you use? I use Drunk Elephants. Right now I've started using their tint one because the regular one's sold out. I love it. For my people of color, I have heard it leaves a bit of a white cast, so maybe not the best for you, unfortunately. I have heard um, some of my friends do love Supergoop. Comment down below if you have a darker skin tone and your favorite sunscreen. I do love dark elephants, but try the tinted one. Like, I would imagine it leaves less of a white cast. I use the sunshine drops, which I'm always scared to talk about now because they get sold out thanks to Alex Earl, but I've been using these for years. What is my natural hair color? My natural hair color is blonde. You can actually see it. This. If I just want to go makeup free, I do use this tinted Bare Minerals. And I don't know why, I put it under my foundation. And when I do that, I just feel like I get to wear less foundation. And yes, I use my hands. I haven't worn a true foundation in years. I just use the CC Cream by It Cosmetics because I started a couple years ago, I had this like aha moment. I was like, makeup sits on your face all day. How cool would it be if I could just wear a face mask on my face all day? Like how good would my skin look? And so I slowly started using makeup that doesn't make my skin worse, it makes my skin better. Kosas concealer. Now, will I start doing weekly vlogs again? I'm forever always torn. Like, I feel no one likes my vlogs in the scheme of things versus like challenges and these bigger and better and have to do more and no one just wants to see my personality and creativity. But like, I love vlogs. I love just a free flowing creativity. Make some art, make some beautiful B-roll. I go through phases because then sometimes I want to be challenged and do a challenge so I'm trying to find that balance in 2024. I'm working on a series, my wellness diaries, I'm wrapping up at the end of December, early January, and I'm gonna start moving into my next series. I think the balance would be two to three vlogs a month and one big challenge. 
I use Milt Bronzer for contouring and I take in a year, but now I've switched all my brushes to Hourglass. Love, they're such good quality, they're amazing. I just wait for a Sephora sale and every Sephora sale I buy one. Now do I play basketball from time to time? No. I don't know, can anyone else relate? Any of my former basketball players, athletes? I did play in a rec league once and it was really fun but it was also depressing. It, it will never be the same as college like with the crowds and even like myself, like I'm obviously not as good as I used to be. Maybe like basketball, I think it was also realizing wasn't like my destiny. Like I loved it and being an athlete was part of me and I'm so glad all the opportunities, but like now moving on to more things, it was a period of my life. Blend, 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 blend. But if there's a hoop anywhere and a basketball, oh my God, I'm showing off. Like it's a great party trick. It's, oh shit. Let's play some horse. I'll win. <laughs> uh, so it's just my little party trick. High performance, I miss the adrenaline of a game day. But even when I play just for fun, I don't know. It's kind of sad. So I don't feel that. It's kind of sad to play a sport you used to play at a high level. And that's why I like music in that. It kind of gives me that same high. Then some powder. Actually, I guys have a question because I'm building my 2024 series. I guess I'll give you a little hint. It's kind of about like becoming her but I don't want to call it that. Like I, I need a name for it. This year has been like overcoming a lot of my demons. Dopamine, popping pimples, diet pop. And next year's doing all that stuff her would do. This ideal version of me would do. And it's some cool challenges. And then also just like my daily life. I'll be graduating from music production school, embracing that, training for a marathon. Anyways, it's just like becoming her. We know that. This is the Coast powder I love. I love, but it always breaks. Mm, mm, mm. Fix your packaging. I mean, it's gotta get ready with it, me without Charlotte Tilbury, it just, it'd be a sin. I wouldn't be able to call myself a content creator. But speaking of which, comment down below some names of the series. I think it'd be cool if we're like on it together. It'll be me trying to become a runner, show up for the best version of myself, make the videos I wanna make creatively, make the music I wanna make. Like it'll be a year of just doing those things, learning to speak Swedish finally, just like all that. Merit blush. I suddenly became a blush girl recently. I never wore it until like three months ago. The irony, I do so much skincare to get rid of the redness on my face, just put the redness back in my face. Merit mascara. I have to be very careful because I'm allergic to like freaking everything. So you can see yourself in the mirror. I didn't organize that. Hourglass eyebrow. Eyebrow gel, because now I brush up my eyebrows because TikTok influenced me to do. No beauty products ever. Actually, some have sent me some things. Anyways, I just kind of fill in the gaps. I'm kind of an all natural look. I find I always have a crease right away, but if I just blend it, it goes. And it would line my lips, but um, I don't know where it is. It's in my purse, I think. But I have been using Hailey Bieber's Road Peptide and it is the bomb. It is worth it. Comment down below if you guys want some get readies with me and I'll do some chit chat. Get ready for the days. But on to the rest of my day. The jacket you saw in that photo, Lululemon. So I'm gonna wear that same outfit for you guys. It's this Lululemon onesie. I got this jacket. Socks are from Aritzia, they're TNA. My Uggs are obviously Ugg. And Aloe Toque. So this fit I'm obsessed with. If you're like, wow, Kelty, you got the match. Yeah, I planned this whole thing. I'll link everything I've talked down below. And I'm sorry if this is very product heavy, but it's Q&A, so I feel no pressure to buy it. But if you've been asking, there's links. It's a recession, so I get it. But at the same time, it's holiday season, so spend wisely. Don't spend more than you can, but treat yourself occasionally. To the office. I have to show you this holiday treat. Who loves a peppermint mocha? This girl. Who loves a chai latte? This girl. Who's just obsessed with anything Christmas holiday flavored come December? This girl. And look at this, guys. Why am I obsessed with electrolytes? Because they reduce muscle cramps, improve energy, stop headaches. They're vital, especially for athletes, workout people. I love Element because it's got 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, which just help facilitate so many important functions in your body. And you can make it a mood. Like who doesn't love a peppermint mocha? And oh my God, I know it sounds weird. It sounds weird, but just think of like salted chocolate, like how good, that's so good. This is like Starbucks. What a mood. Sydney said the fire, hot cocoa. Oh, 
Also, a little hack, swap this with a coffee if you're trying to scale back on your caffeine. Because if I start my day with Element, I have so much energy because electrolytes are so important for hydration, it's not just water. And I'm so obsessed with Element because it's the highest quality. It's, it's used by NBA players, NFL, NHL. If it's good enough for Olympians, it's definitely good enough for us. This is such a good stocking stuffer, a little thing to throw in. Oh, it's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. So take advantage of their new Christmas flavors, chocolate chai, chocolate mint, and chocolate raspberry to get you in the holiday spirit. And of course I got a deal for you guys. If you guys use my link, you will get a sample pack of eight element flavors with your purchase. It's a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. To get yours, go to drinkelements.com slash Kelty. That's drinkelement.com slash Kelty for this deal. And oh, this is peak that girl vibes holiday huberman all in one if you've got a friend that listened to huberman buy them this for christmas boom i'm proud of myself for just thinking about that on the spot favorite spots in van taco fino seagull bagels which you saw both today parlor banter room for a night out Minami if you want good sushi. Blue Water Cafe if you want a fancy night. Workouts, I love Jaybird Hot Yoga, House Concepts, Berries, those are my go-to. YVR Cycle, oh, Taco Fino. Birds in the Beat Sandwich, Nelson Seagull, and Nemesis for Coffee, True Confections, Carrot Cake. I think my biggest tip, if you're someone who wants to start quote unquote unhealthy things and be okay with them, I think it's just small doses, just little micro exposures to it. That's always helped me that I've talked about with like OCD. If this has been here and life's going good, in my mind, I can't move it because my whole world will fall apart. Sounds crazy. And how I've kind of overcome that and it's no longer crippling is like, I just started by just moving a little. And then that's all I did for the day. The next day I come, I'm like, oh, that didn't make a difference. So I can move it over there. This is a good example. There's many things in this. There's chicken, fried rice, mayo, lettuce, a wrap. So I think there's a lot of things people might consider unhealthy, whether it be the mayo, fried rice, pick one, maybe just add mayo. And then the next week, you know, do the fried rice. And trust yourself, you're not gonna go off the rails. Just because you start putting mayo on your sandwich doesn't mean like all hell's gonna break loose. Just experiment with that and just trust yourself to just little exposure, see what happens. Do I cycle sync my workouts and meals? No, but it's something I'm interested in. I am more seasonal. Like I sync my workouts to the season, kind of like a year and just instead of just like weekly thing. The jobs I had when I first started, I had a lot of jobs in the past. I'd done personal training, I'd done marketing, freelancing, I'd done modeling, done a lot of bartending, a lot of working for restaurants, but a lot of like marketing, whether it be social media or in person um, for fitness brands like Orange Theory Fitness, right before I went full-time on YouTube, about six months prior, I quit all corporate aspirations and just took up bartending pretty much full-time again. Like I went back, I was bartending corporate, went back to bartending because I knew I could just work a couple days a week bartending and make a livable wage and all those other days of the week work full-time on YouTube. Now, if I wasn't an influencer, okay, question, because I do YouTube, not really Instagram. Am I an influencer? Or my content creator? What's the difference? I don't know. I think I would be trying to do music full time. I think I would have done the more traditional way of DJing is like being that the 8 p.m. slot at bars, DJing when no one's there and doing that while working on music and trying to build it up. Or I think I, I would be something with like music videos. I don't know what, directing, producing, script writing, something in that scale, or just trying to be in film, like regular. I think I would have just gone the more regular mainstream route of video and music versus this like independent YouTuber route. I hope at least. Or I could have just been a bartender the rest of my life and nothing ever happened. Where do I get my energy from? <laughs> I'm kidding, I should stop making that joke. But uh, jokes aside, I wanna say sugar and caffeine, but at the same time, I think this is just who I am. I do get depressive episodes when I'm not doing things I enjoy, I can really be pouty. So I just feel as long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing, it's like a cycle. And it's just like, oh, I love it. I wanna apologize for this. That my decks have just been hidden away in this closet for the last month. And it's not for a lack of not working on music. 
Back in August, I went back to school for music production. So I'm a couple months into it and I, I was overwhelmed between YouTube, pumping out DJ streams and working on music. And I realized I don't just want to be a DJ. I also want to be a music producer. I want to have my own original music to play in my DJ sets. And with that, it got to be too much for the last few months. So it was kind of, I was like, Kel, you got to cut one thing. I'm not cutting mixes. It's just more like I took a temporary pause. I can only release one every six weeks instead of every two weeks right now because Insert next question. I'm indeed working on a full album, full songs. I'm releasing less so I can get better and release better qualities. And I'm hoping I'll graduate in around February and then it'll be like music coming out, DJ streams coming out. And like, I would love to be able to perform somewhere. That'd be unbelievable here, but I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek. Anyways, there's just a little sneak peek of a fun song I'm working on. It's absolutely so much fun. Has anyone noticed how every documentary just starts with someone walking and sitting on a chair and then da 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 da? I'm gonna finish the last few are a bit more juicy, a bit more sentimental. So enough of the transitions. We're just gonna go heart to heart. First, boyfriend update. I'm indeed still dating Megs. We've been together four and a half years, which is crazy. Longest relationship, most amazing relationship. Yeah. He's my person. After your explant surgery, did you find that some brands didn't want to work with you or that sponsors were harder to find? Asking since it seemed like implants were a choice to have more work opportunities. Ah, juicy. Yeah, when I first got them was like eight years ago. So YouTube and influencing was really a thing. And I thought it would get me more into like fitness modeling. So that's why I got them. And I guess it never really even dawned on me when I got them removed that like brands might not be interested in me. I think it shows the times that if a brand were to not work with me because I got my implants out, I guess maybe if like they were just like super weird about the mention of plastic surgery. Saw that if anything, I've started in last year working with brands I've dreamed of. Element, Eight Sleep, even started working a little bit with Lulu, which has been really cool. No one's left that I know of. Like I know I, I'm no longer with Gymshark and it's around that time and like that had nothing to do with it. Just even to address that, because I know there'll always be questions. Nothing happened there. It was just my contract was over and we decided not to renew. I love the brand, I love the people. They were going in their direction, I'm going in mind. I feel they're more aligned with them. I'm more aligned with myself now. And it was like a great time when I was with them. And then it's, you know, the evolution. I think it, it's no drama a contract ended and just went different ways. There's an example of a brand who I haven't worked with since, but I can't think of anyone that stopped working with me. Maybe one or two. I'm sure there's a brand or two that hates me. I hope not. I tried to do my best. How did I meet my boyfriend? A dating app when he was still living over here in Canada. And then I don't think I've ever said this. We were just chatting young and reckless and was like, let's pick a spot to meet. And we decided on how we did like a random city generator on Google and it, we ended up on picking Barcelona. And so I, I went and met a random man in a foreign country, but I did a lot of, a lot of fact checking. Something like, I was like, this is gonna be like for a great wild story or, you know, it could be the love of my life. And it happened to be both. <laughs> What's the number one why for starting a YouTube channel? I just thought it was the coolest thing. I remember watching Casey Neistat and these YouTubers I loved, and I just knew I craved something to do with media and film, and I didn't know if it was music videos or movies, but I was like, that's so cool, I could just make my own. And I just started doing it, and I've explored just a thousand different ways, and that's why I'm, I wish I was someone who's like, I just wanna do fitness YouTube, or I just wanna do vlogs, or just, I'm just like inspired by the platform in general to a fault, that I'm like, oh, I'd love to do that and that. If I, it's so cheesy. It's so cheesy, I'm about to say this out loud. I just want to bring a little light into people's day. 15, 12 minutes, whether it be laugh, smile, aha, just light. Will me and my boyfriend ever move in permanently together? We kind of are in the sense that like I live half the year with him, um, but like will we ever be in one spot at the same time? Hopefully in several years. Hit, both of our careers just make it that he has to be in wherever his team is for uh, usually like 11 months of the year and I can't fully be there. So right now we're kind of half and half, but I think we'll always have hopefully somewhere in Canada, somewhere in Sweden. I would like to know more about your financial struggles or successes. How do you budget when you live in such an expensive place and have to keep going to Sweden, et cetera? Any saving plans? I never saw that from a fitness lifestyle YouTuber and be super interesting merge of worlds that is coming in 2024 because I suck at finances. I'm not good at it. I'm trying to get better, I'm investing, but I'm kind of someone who's like, if this will make my YouTube do well, spend it. I don't, don't look at the books and it's not good. I grew up with a family that doesn't talk about finances and I'm trying to learn to educate myself, but like, I didn't even realize you had to do taxes until I was in my like 20s. Like, I'm so bad. Now I'm like really trying to educate myself, overcome some of the screw ups I had when I was younger and not, you know what I mean? I was just kind of 
sent to the wolves when I was 18 and was like, oh, figure it out. Um, so that will be a big series, but just know I'm not good at it. And I think that's not talked about enough. Like I'm trying to educate myself and trying to learn savings, paying off debt. I have debt, trying to make investments, um, trying to make, I can't stick to a budget. It's something not talked about, especially in the fitness world. So yeah, I've had a lot of financial struggles, especially in the last few years. I had a really unfortunate thing with some medical emergencies, a tax issue that got screwed up. Lack of better terms, I suddenly like owed 30K. I was like, I don't have 30K. It was a crazy learning lesson that I'm still overcoming and paying for and dealing with, but we're getting through. And I'll talk about that in a big challenge I have in 2024. So if you're worried about finances and you're not a financial girly, let's deal with it together. I would love to hear what you have planned for 2024. I love your channel and content. First of all, love you. Um, my biggest thing is I have a big series, like I said, and I really want to hear from you guys. What are your big goals for 2024? What should we call this series? In essence, right now, I have like 12 really big challenges I want to do for just like my ultimate self. Like one is learning Swedish. One's a swimming one. One's a triathlon. One's a marathon one. Some are a bit more financial. I've done the Beyonce Taylor Swift. I'm elevating that and like releasing music anyway so it's going to be like 2024 is like the year of just like challenging myself maybe not the most viral challenge whether it just be paying off debt swimming every day but it's like the stuff i've always wanted to do but i've never done but i know i can do things i've always wanted to do but didn't and create my own series like my own style of video maybe we call it vlogs so i would love to hear from you guys like think of a becoming her series what could we call, we call that and we can do that together what do I do if I'm running and there's a stray dog on the street? That dog is now yours. Take it home. Bathe it, love it, nurture it. Pet it. Because have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys.